Do you love playing Pyro but hate it when other players use fire-resisting items? Do you want a weapon that isn't your melee that can kill people while you're both underwater? Are you struggling against other players going Pyro and need something to help you out because the flamethrower is inadequate for your needs? If you said yes to any of the following, I have the guide for you. How yin's doing? I'm an Ian, and this is my TF2 How to Kill Streak series, where we look at the best and worst TF2 has to offer, and I show you how to get a kill streak with it. Because everything is a bad idea until it works. Today, we'll be covering the Pyro's shotguns, so without further ado, let's get into it. We will start with stock, partly because I have a strange festivized killstreak version of it named Old Reliable, but mostly because it's the first secondary players will have for Pyro since it's the default you have unlocked when you first install TF2. The stock shotgun in TF2 has six shots in its clip before you need to reload it. If you are more accustomed to shotguns in other FPS video games which can effectively one-hit kill players at point-blank range, you'll find that TF2 shotgun to be rather lackluster, since if the opponent you're shooting at is at full health, it's gonna take you at least two to three shots to kill them. Combine this with the fact that your primary weapon is a flamethrower that does far superior damage at close quarters, and I wouldn't be surprised why some of you might be wondering why you would ever want to use your shotguns when your other secondary options consist of flare guns, which allow you to set people on fire from across the map, and a literal jetpack. And the answer to that will vary depending on your playstyle and the given situations you're finding yourself in as Pyro. The most common reason players will opt for the shotgun over the flare guns is to deal with fire resistance. You see, TF2 has a plethora of ways to deal with afterburn and fire damage. To name some of the more common ones you'll come across are vaccinator medics, which are effectively immune to a single type of damage at any given time, other pyros who, if they are using the shotgun and you're not, will be at a distinct advantage in a 1v1 fight against you, spies who use the spicicle alongside the deadringer effectively have a get out of jail free card against you, and Darwin's Danger Shield snipers are effectively immune to your flare gun shots. There are also many other items and ways of gaining fire resistance in TF2, but I think you get the point by now. The second, far less common reason to use the shotguns over the flare guns is that they don't work underwater, meaning if you're on a custom map or playing on two fort sewers and trying to go for shark pyro, you're going to effectively not have a secondary if you use the flare guns over the shotguns. So if you're playing on a map where you're consistently underwater as Pyro, you might want to consider one of these weapons over your other secondaries. However, since the only maps where players are consistently fighting underwater whatsoever are Banana Bay and Two Fort, yeah, I don't think this is going to be a selling point for the majority of you watching. However, there is one other reason players might opt to use the shotguns over your other secondaries. They're a hitscan weapon that spreads over a nice area, meaning it's a lot harder to miss your shots compared to your other secondary options as Pyro. So if you're the kind of player who can't land projectiles of any kind whatsoever, yeah, these are the only damage-dealing secondaries you have available to you as Pyro. Personally, I've been in the habit of using a shotgun as Pyro ever since Jungle Inferno dropped, since when that update hit, everyone was playing Pyro. And that's not an exaggeration, I'm dead serious. You could count the number of players on a given server who weren't playing Pyro on a single hand, if you could find any at all in the first place, that is. The best way to use the shotguns when going for a killstreak as Pyro is as the developers intended, as a plan B. If you're looking for a weapon that can let you kill people from across the map, play a different class entirely. Pyro is not meant for that whatsoever. Okay, so maybe you can pull something off with a Scorch Shot if you just spam it down a choke point or something, but realistically, if you're serious about getting a kill streak from long range, you shouldn't be playing Pyro. You should be picking a different class, like Sniper. And if your game plan is to catch the enemy off guard and kill everyone with the element of surprise by melting them in an entire room rather quickly, you shouldn't be trying to go Rambo with your shotguns, you should be using the back burner. The Pyro shotguns are a tool for dealing with players who are just outside of flamethrower range that need to be finished off before they can reach a nearby health pack, or to deal with players who can't be set on fire in the first place, like Darwin's Danger Shield snipers and other Pyros. They are not something you should go guns blazing with as if they were your primary weapon. Your shotguns are secondary weapons and should be treated as such. As for the stock shotgun specifically, well, it's the default weapon you get in TF2 when you first install the game, so realistically, it's less a question about why you should use this and why you shouldn't use anything else over it. And you can't really make an informed decision on whether or not you want to use this weapon over your other options without first looking at those other options. So let's go ahead and do that, shall we? No! God, please, no! 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 The Reserve Shooter was once one of the most hated secondary weapons in the Pyro's arsenal. This was because at the cost of a smaller clip size, you could switch between your weapons faster and mini-crit all airborne targets. 
and this was back when the degreaser also had an increased weapon switch speed effect, which would stack with the reserve shooter, meaning you could effectively switch between your weapons instantaneously if you used these two weapons in conjunction with each other. Combine this with the fact that the extinguisher would give you guaranteed critical hits upon hitting burning players back then, the fact you can send players airborne at will with your air blast, and considering the fact that thanks to TF2's janky spaghetti code, standing on stairs on certain maps counts as being airborne, and you can quickly see why so many people hated this combo pyro playstyle as it became known. This playstyle in TF2 actually became so powerful on pyro that it utterly eclipsed all other pyro playstyles to the point where playing anything else as pyro was simply not as viable in comparison. In fact, this loadout was so powerful that the only variation you would see in Pyro main loadouts was what secondary they used, the reserve shooter for increased weapon switch speed, or one of the flare guns in order to set players on fire from across the map as well as guaranteed mini crits on burning targets regardless if they were in the air or not. In fact, this loadout was so powerful that pretty much every aspect of it was nerfed in some capacity during Jungle Inferno, and surprisingly, unlike most things that get nerfed in TF2, it's still viable after being nerfed. Air Blast was probably the most reworked of all the things that got nerfed into the ground because of this, since before then, if you hit someone with your Air Blast, they would move in a fixed direction, making them easy to predict and hit, to say nothing of the rebalancing the Extinguisher had to deal with. However, for the purposes of this video, we will just focus on the Reserve Shooter. Now, instead of getting guaranteed mini crits on all players who are airborne regardless of what sent them airborne, now you will only get guaranteed mini crits against players who are sent airborne via explosions, grapple hooks, or the thermal thruster. This means players who you sent airborne with the air blast, players standing on stairs, or players who hit the spacebar to jump will no longer grant you mini crits against them. However, you still get guaranteed mini crits against rocket jumping soldiers, so if you're on high tower getting dominated by a trollger, this thing can be quite useful at dealing with them. The weapon switch speed was also reworked slightly, where before it was just a flat increase to how fast you switch between all your weapons, regardless if you were switching to or from the reserve shooter, now it's just a 20% faster deploy speed on the reserve shooter itself. In fact, the only aspect of this gun that wasn't changed whatsoever during Jungle Inferno was its downside, your clip being 34% or two shots smaller than stock. This weapon can still be viable by all accounts, however, it is not nearly as good as it used to be since you need your enemies to be going into the air of their own volition in order to get guaranteed mini crits against them. This makes the reserve shooter great for dealing with rocket jumping soldiers and other airborne targets, however, if your opponents tend to be stuck on the ground a bit more, this weapon is going to be lackluster compared to your other options. So if you feel like recreating combo pyro from the good old days, or you're struggling at dealing with airborne opponents, this can be a great weapon to switch to, however, otherwise you're better off using your other weapons. Despite the increased deploy speed, this is not a weapon you want to be relying on whenever you're trying to switch to something in a panic. No, that honor goes to the last weapon we'll be covering today. The Panic Attack is a peculiar weapon, since it's the only unlockable weapon in Team Fortress 2 that can be used by four different classes. If you're interested in my opinion on how this weapon works on Heavy, then check my Fat Scout Killstreak video in the description. And if you're interested in my opinion on how this weapon works with Soldier and Engineer, subscribe for when I finally make a video on the subject, since today we'll be covering exclusively how this weapon works on Pyro. But first, let's go over what this weapon actually does, specifically. Shooting 50% more bullets per shot in a fixed pattern that bypasses random bullet spread entirely, as well as deploying 50% faster, the Panic Attack would be a straight upgrade if not for the fact that your bullets deal 20% less damage, as well as your shots having increased damage spread as the bullets spread further and further apart from each other after each successive shot. You know how in Borderlands 2 Hyperion weapons become more accurate the more you shoot with them? Yeah, this thing does the reverse. If you want this weapon for yourself, it can be crafted by combining two reclaimed metal and a backscatter. However, I recommend just trading for it or waiting for a random drop if you wish to acquire this weapon. The Panic Attack is great for those of you with poor aim, which given the fact you're playing Pyro is not exactly an unlikely possibility. This is because not only is the number of bullets being sent to the air with each shot increase, but they're moving in a fixed pattern with no RNG being a factor. This means that as long as your cursor is on top of whatever the hell you want dead, you're going to hit it no matter what. Granted, with damage falloff still being a thing, you might not be able to do enough damage to your target if you're too far away, but that's just a problem with all shotguns, and the panic attack is no exemption to that. This is also the best shotgun for dealing with sticky traps, since you're shooting so many bullets in the air, means you can also destroy a lot of stickies in a single clean shot. 
Although, since Pyro has access to Air Blast, this is not as big a selling point for you as it is for the other classes that can equip the Panic Attack. What might be a selling point with this weapon, however, is the fact that its increased switch speed means that you can actually switch it rapidly with a degreaser to effectively dual wield the two weapons. However, this tactic requires a great degree of practice and skill in order to use successfully and can only be done when using the panic attack and degreaser in conjunction with one another. Therefore, if you don't have several hours to invest into practicing a new technique in a video game, or if you just prefer to use a primary weapon on Pyro that isn't the degreaser, you'll want to consider using other secondaries. The panic attack works best when you're constantly switching between your weapons. If you're the kind of person who usually just sticks to their primary and only occasionally switches to their secondary, the panic attack is not the right fit for you. You'll want to move on to other weapons. However, if you're the kind of player who's constantly switching between their weapons for whatever reason, this is a great weapon to consider. All in all, I give the Pyro shotguns and apples to oranges out of 10. They aren't crazy overpowered to the point where they eclipse each other, but none of them are so underwhelming that you question why they're in the game in the first place. These weapons know exactly what they're doing, and they're going to stick to their lane. So if you want to be constantly switching up your playstyles without switching out your loadouts, you're going to want to move on to other weapons. That's all for now, though. Like the video if you did, subscribe if you don't want to miss the next one, comment what weapons you want to see me cover in the future. I've been an Ian, you have been you, and this has been my TF2 How to Kill Streak Guide to the Pyro's Shotguns. And stay tuned, the Scottish Resistance is coming up next.